Welcome to Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch, Part 2, Having a Look at the Steam Engine. And here she is. This is a Stuart Models Twin Compound Launch Engine. That's a twin cylinder engine, but the cylinders are different sizes, and the exhaust from the small cylinder empties into the larger cylinder, that's because it's a compound engine. So the steam is effectively used twice. It's quite well made, I'm having a real good look at this, there's a little bit of wear and it needs a bit of adjustment, but it's not bad at all. It runs quite sweetly as you'll hear in a minute, but I can't do anything with it in this state. The first thing I have to do is make a simple mounting for it. I'm just using a piece of scrap wood and I'm going to cut it to length and make two pieces, one for each side of the engine, because it's no good working on the engine with the engine sat on the bench with most of the weight on the flywheel. These crankshafts are not like a 5A, they're not very thick, they're not very strong, and they do bend quite easily. So once it's mounted on these two pieces of wood, then the flywheel will be kept clear of the bench. And before I mount the engine anywhere at all, I need to give it a good clean. It really is filthy, it's sat in the boat for many, many years, and it was probably oily to start with, so the dust is very well stuck to the metal. The good news though, because it's oily dust, the engine's not particularly rusty. Just a dry paintbrush was not good enough. In the end, I used some white spirit. That removed the grime. As I get further into the build, I may even remove the black paint from the top of the cylinder, because it doesn't look very good, and it's a very visible part of this model. I will also give the steam piping another coat of white paint too. Now that the engine's looking a lot cleaner, I'm going to mount it to these two pieces of scrap wood. Mounting the engine is very simple. I just sit the engine on the piece of wood, draw around the shape of the engine's base with a pen. Then I also marked on the wood the position of the mounting holes on these lugs. After which I drilled holes one eighth of an inch diameter into the piece of wood and screwed in a 4BA bolt. A 4BA bolt will cut its own thread quite easily in a piece of wood if it's an eighth of an inch diameter hole. If I was mounting this engine into metal, I would have drilled the hole still with an eighth of an inch down to drill, then I would have used a tap to thread the metal. But as this is soft wood, the 4BA bolt cuts its own thread, I don't need to tap the hole. At least when both these pieces of wood are mounted, it gives the engine a firm base. The engine is not going to fall over on the bench, which of course could damage it, and also it's not going to put any pressure on the flywheel. This crankshaft is already bent slightly, I'm going to deal with that shortly but I may not show it on the video because it's not for the faint-hearted. After I've turned the engine round, it's time to repeat the process on the other piece of wood. Because you've already seen me do this once, I'm not going to talk about fitting the second piece of wood. It's obvious that I did it in the same way as the first. Instead, I'll have a quick word about compound steam engines. A simple steam engine is one that has two equally sized cylinders. Steam is admitted to and from each of these cylinders by two slide valves, one for each cylinder. As the steam is admitted and exhausted from each side of the piston, the pistons go up and down in each of the cylinders. It's all very clever really, simple but clever. Steam goes into the steam chest. It's admitted to one side of the piston, it moves the piston up, and then the steam is allowed to escape to exhaust as the slide valve moves to the exhaust position for that particular cylinder. It's quite difficult to explain, but once you know how it works, it's very, very simple. And this is happening for each cylinder. The cylinders work together. So it's really a four-cylinder engine. A steam is applied to first the top part of the piston, then underneath the piston. That's why steam engines have things called glands, which stops the steam escaping around the piston rod. Steam engines also have glands on the valve spindles that move the slide valves. The description that I've just tried to give is the way a simple steam engine works, not a compound. A twin cylinder simple steam engine, two pistons, both double acting, completely self-starting at any part of the cycle. A compound steam engine is different. A compound steam engine has one small cylinder and one large cylinder. Steam is admitted via a slide valve to the first cylinder, the small one, then the exhaust of that is admitted to the steam chest for the larger cylinder, which also has a slide valve in it, and lets the spent steam into the larger cylinder. 
and because one cylinder is a high pressure cylinder and the other one is a low pressure or intermediate pressure cylinder, the steam is effectively used twice. Couple that with a good degree of superheat, that's very hot steam going into the first cylinder, and the whole thing becomes much more economic. But there's a trade-off, there is always a trade-off. You don't get anything for nothing, not in this game. When you have a simple steam engine, admit the steam, full power straight away on any given cylinder. With a compound, it doesn't work like this. Mainly, the steam is going into the first cylinder, and as you notice here, I have to give it a shove to make it start. If the compound engine stopped precisely in the right position every time, it wouldn't be a problem, but it doesn't. So it isn't always self-starting. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. You can, of course, mess around with the timing, and you can drive yourself quite mad and then men in white coats will come and take you away because you can get it just so so it nearly always starts but then it doesn't and you have a situation it's a lovely cold winter's day and the boat is in the middle of the lake and your beautiful model boat has got no inclination to go anywhere because the wonderful compound engine has refused to start because its cranks are not in the right position relative to where the steam has been admitted and you've no way of getting it back other than wading in to get the boat or swimming across the lake and it's freezing cold. So you have a choice, you either just watch the boat cremate itself and emulate a Viking funeral or you get your kit off and get in the water. This sounds like a wonderful hobby I hear you say, but look on the bright side, it's not a model aeroplane. They have a habit of hitting the ground at a great rate of knots and you just need a bin liner to put the bits in. You may have noticed that this engine runs quite well. You also may have noticed, and I've mentioned it before, that the flywheel's a little bit wonky. I will put that right later. But it really goes well. It really does go well. And sometimes it starts, as you can see, I'm stopping and starting here, and I'm not flicking the flywheel. But then it doesn't start, and I have to give the flywheel a push. Before any Inspector Meticulous type experts write in and tell me all about compounds and how I'm doing it wrong, I do know about the fix whereby you can get a compound to be self-starting by making a special valve that does two things. It exhausts the outlet of cylinder one to the atmosphere and then supplies live steam from the boiler to the inlet of cylinder two. And then when you close the valve, the engine goes from being a simple engine to a compound engine again. So therefore it's self-starting as a simple and then will run as a compound just by moving the lever on the valve which is all very well, but a little bit beyond the scope of what I need to do with this boat. This is a vintage boat, so we're going to live with the compound, with all its problems, and just make sure that it doesn't stop, unlike this double ten. The radio control system will include, of course, a gas shut-off valve, just in case the engine does stop. And here's a bit more stopping and starting of the compound to illustrate the point. And once again, just so you don't think it was a fluke, here is the compound, and when I stop it, I have to start it. The cylinders on this Stuart compound launch engine are bigger than the ones on a double ten. So effectively, a twin launch compound is a more powerful engine than a double ten. Double tens are great for certain applications, and they're okay for inside boats. I don't really care for them in open launches, although I have put plenty of them in open launches. But this Stuart model's twin launch compound engine really looks the part in an open launch. And that's it for now, you'll see me work on the engine in due course. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.